My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get a $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. It's Wednesday Wonders, science fiction and fantasy on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated R and is recommended restricted for anyone under the age of 17. The following audio presentation may contain mature language, situations, and violence. Listener discretion is advised. Previously on Edict Zero FIS. What? Hmm? What? That's not a happy sound. You're not here to threaten me and you're not here to kill me. Then why are you here? To bring you a gift. If this is true, then you're not going to believe who Mr. Cook is or was. Mr. Cook is working up to what he thinks will be a grand unveiling. What is the status of our special tactical coverage in that region? Unit 9 did well with the Center City bombing and has experience if the situation repeats. God forbid. We have a man in the FIS Task Force Unit which is heading the efforts now. It is our case, after all, Agent Kircher. Is it? It is. Suspicious would be better. I wonder why you're being so accommodating and giving me speculative latitude that no other agent who just met me would. The cameras did not capture Mr. Cook, but they did capture Melissa Parker. 26A64 is a sensitive instrument. She knows much. She hears much. There exists a real possibility of involvement of conspiracy cells in the West Central region. Is us waiting for the bringer. He didn't come last time, Dimitri, or the time before that. Remember? You have a fit. The bringer is... Here. Good morning. Xenos Corporation, Gino Coast Regional Office, Alcazar, South Island, Wednesday, December 31st, 2414, time for 40 p.m. Representative at Memtex Technologies, a subsidiary of Xenos Corporation, also develops industrial applications of directed energy technology. Did you know that the pulse energy projectile technology of today's phasers, as well as... We need to reschedule the meeting with Dexter Robotics. No one else will be available on January 12th because of the Z-Link Symposium at South Island State University. The 14th or 15th will be better. I'll negotiate a new date while you're out of the office and message you when the calendar has been updated. Thank you, Derwin. Is there anything else? You have not yet responded to an RSVP for an event on April 9th by STEM. S-T-E-M, acronym for the Science and Technology Education Movement. You were invited to join a panel as an industry representative to discuss science curriculum in public schools. There is no science curriculum in public schools. I believe that is the crux of their topic. I will not be attending, but don't respond. Officially declining in first position with these people, who will be eager to publicize it in a way that suits their agenda. Noted. Ms. Go? Yes, I'm here. Well, forgive the delay. Also, forgive me for taking time to verify your identity at Zenus. There are certain kinds of inquiries which demand additional security protocols be followed, even if at the expense of convenience. I understand and approve. I helped draft some of those procedures on information management. There have been three economic sabotage attempts just this month in South Island. 
couple here, too. Conspiracy groups have some awfully strange ideas about what we do in our research labs. All our DDs are on level two alert. Do you have information for me? Well, as I'm sure you're aware, the first Nemtech's facility corresponds with the lowest site numbers. WN1 in Palm Valley and WC1 in Vegas 2 and so on, but... That's not what I asked. Right, it isn't. You asked for the oldest structures which facilities now occupy. Which would have the same answer, if not for the site WC15, whose building was the original Zenith Corporation office in West Island. How about that? WC. Which West Central site? Holland Cove. Was the second structure in the settlement, as a matter of fact. The first residential neighborhoods of the town developed around it in 2134. It even meets the other criteria that you gave me, and that it's a coastal area. Do you think that will make good material for that historical presentation you're outlining? I think it will. Thank you. Have a good holiday. Oh, you too. Can I help you at all with anything else today? No, that's all. And thank you. <coughs> May I ask what historical presentation was being referenced? I have found nothing in the schedule which mentions... Derwin, can you bring up a map which shows site WC-15 for Nemtex? A map which includes geography? Yes, Miss Cole. Aha. Mm -hmm. You did not answer my query about the mentioned historical presentation. It's for the proposed Zenith Museum project in Geneva. The conference for our prospective investors isn't for another eight months, but I'm trying to get a jump on the presentation. Oh, hey, Janet. Still in? I thought I was the only one left on the floor. <laughs> I'm heading out now. I had a few last-minute things to wrap up. Oh, uh, me too, and then I'm off for a week. Be heading off to West Island, making the tourist rounds with Vegas 2 and Hollywood. In fact, the friend and I will be leaving shortly for a ferry over the Sound. Have tickets for the Firefly Lounge tonight in Little Hollywood. Gordy Casey's hosting. Isn't that awesome? Yes, awesome. So, what are you doing for New Year's? Anything exciting? I can't tell you. If I did, I would have to kill you. Oh, top secret PR business, eh? Oh. Something like that. New Madrid Coastal Expressway. Rest stop area. Salamanca City, South Island. Time, 8.17 p.m. It's New Year's Eve. Have you seen the traffic? Do you have something for me? Is there a Z-Link in this vehicle? Of course not. That would defeat the purpose of swapping cars. It's a mock stealth unit. Are you going to waste time patronizing me? Or are you going to tell me what you found out about- Holland Cove, West Island. Site WC-15. Holland Cove. Are you sure? It's the site that best matches the criteria given by Alistair. I checked and I double checked. It's just that we don't believe that Holland Cove is a key site. We've had people in there. Their research and development division is legit, transparent, and the security detail is minor compared to other sites on our watch list. Then Alistair must be wrong, or he knows something that we don't. It's suspicious, but Dimitri must trust him. There's a box in the back seat. Alistair will want it. What time will he appear at the Lloydtown site? Not Lloydtown. That has changed. The new drop point is in Angola. The address is on the box. He is expected between 12 and 12.40 a.m. Give him the box, confirm the site, and let him know that Dimitri awaits him in San Julian. I am told that he will give you something for your trouble. Don't scratch the paint job on my car, please. It will be in good condition when I leave it at your place, and 
and it may be some time before you hear from me again. Good luck. Oh, also, you will find a blinking light at the site aimed at the floor. You'll want to stay away from that flashing pool of light it creates. If you are in it when he arrives, well, don't be in it. The Vortex Nightclub. Second Floor Parlor. Center City, Mainland. Thursday, January 1st, 2415. Time, 12.03 a.m. And the, uh, and the, uh, item, Mr. Cook. In exchange for Melissa here, you... Yes, the briefcase. It is yours. Get it, Curly. It's almost over, I promise. Oh, I've waited so long for this. I'm going to take your hand now. Don't be afraid. What? This isn't what we agreed on! This isn't what I asked for! What's the meaning of this, Cook? What the hell is this thing? It's a bomb. It's a... Boom. Condemned Rectory. 54 Psalm Street. Angola. South Island. Agent Alistair. No. Mr. Cook. Okay, so you don't prefer that reference. We must leave now. The box I was instructed to give you is on the table there. I've also confirmed the site WC-15. There's a group waiting for you at the San Julian location. I understand that you have something for me? Yes. A gift. What is it? Truth. Wait, what are you- You are listening to Edict Zero, FIS, the science fiction audio drama series. Starring James Keller, Julie Hoverson, Phil Rossi, Tanya Milojevic, Russell Gold, Glenn Hallstrom, Jane Eastman, and creator Jack Kincaid. Rochester FIS Tactical Training Grounds. Marcellus, Mainland. North of Capital City. Sunday, January 4th, 2415. Time, 1041 AM. What's the status of Harvey and the Goon Crew? There is no code name for the operation that I'm aware of. Yes, I know. I'm on my way to get him now. Mm -hmm. 10 -1. You're coming through all frayed. Yes, yes, forever. <laughs> ha, you can tell Braddock is here by the music. <laughs> Plays the command card on Sundays. Mm -hmm. During recreation time on the range, it takes the damn place over. It's probably why he ain't answering. Missy showed off his phone to chase some cadet skirts. Hey, the man's always up to no good. That's what he are. Good morning. I'll need to verify your ID. Sure, here you go, ma'am. I presume the TU-9 Commander John Braddock is here. <clears throat> when did he show up here? Two hours ago. Oh, wow. Hell of a drill house, ain't it? He's probably used to south side of the academy. No. Love the sound of them big guns. <laughs> We'd find all kinds of trouble in here. <laughs> God, that's so sexy. Huh. I forgot how big it was. Are you sure you can handle it? Oh, wow. 
So dirty. Now, hold it in your hands like this. Yes, that's right. And rub it right here. Gently, very gently. Tip of the barrel is sensitive. You don't want to scratch it. Scratch lens is just as bad as a dirty one. Can lead to damaging feedback and misfires. Always keep it clean. That is a Glock PEP 13 Series A. Only one of 500 made in 2312. Take good care of it, or you're going to make me cry. That is a classic. Thank you. You can thank me by taking good care of that beauty, cadet. I have to go check on a couple trainees that I'm tutoring. <laughs> Behave yourself. Target neutralized. Hmm. Two out of ten. Shit. Yelling an apple. You tag two, that's an improvement. This is ridiculous. Don't be too hard on yourself. You'll get the hang of level three just like you got the hang of level two. Ugh, makes me You're sick. You're making progress. You tried, that's what's most important. You didn't come in here like you did the first day and throw your hands up and say you couldn't do it. Maybe I should have because it's true. I can't. Now is that you talking? Or is that the voice of your section chief daddy who doesn't think his precious flower has what it Stop takes? It. I know he's hard on you. And that chip on your shoulder has his name written all over it. I'm gonna be hard on you too. If you think I'm being too hard now, you ain't seen nothing yet. But the difference between me and your daddy is I believe you can do this. Like anything, practice makes perfect. If you're serious about entering the tactical division for field operations, you need to know how to handle the range of weapons. I know. If you want your best, be obsessed. You've got nothing to lose by spending three or four hours in here each day. Um, your sanity... Do you want my help or not? I have a host of other students with five times your discipline and ten times the respect. But... Ah, uh, no buts. Do you want to pass the test or don't you? Okay. May I? For starters, stop room in the room. Don't let the weapon intimidate you. Or trust in its power so much that you think you can go lax. Make it yours and use it. Most importantly... Use what you need. If you spray like that willy-nilly in the field, you're gonna run out of charge, and then for all practical purposes, this is just an expensive piece of junk. Level five, six, seven, eight, nine. Speed setting, three, five. Number of targets, 10, 15. Be alert, be focused. Most important of all, be deliberate. Your combat theater begins. Find a zone five, and own the scene. Four. Once you do that, heaven help any trespassers. Headshot. 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 Target neutralized. 15 out of 15. Owned. All suspects down. Congratulations. Is this one of those male superiority things? Hello there, Carrie. Now that you mention it, it is one of those male superiority things. Until you can do better, that is. Mm -hmm. Think you can? Up for the challenge? Don't tempt me. I'm sure we could think of some interesting bets to let ride on it. Oh, we're not going to do that. You burned me last time. You know I'm no hustler. Playtime is over, Commander Brock. Malin, it's been a while. Give me just a second, all right? Here's your weapon. Keep shooting. Remember, use only what you need. Discipline. Deliberate. Good luck. All right, Malin, let's take a walk. Okay, so what's going on? You just go deploy to East Island. To support the task force unit there. And it's my orders to hold you to the RV. How's the senior SSA gig going? Must not be too good if they're sending you down here to fetch me. All the orders are in your inbox if you have bothered to check it. I apologize. Harvey's waiting outside. And we've got two pickups on the way out of the big sea. This had better not be another wild goose chase by Wakeman after the East Island raids. Organized crime is off the table. The mission's shifting to another angle. Will that new task force unit with that buddy of yours, Garrett? He's no buddy of mine. And that unit is a joke. They didn't make it two days before we had to rescue one of them from a damn sewer. Over what? A couple of crazy gutter dwellers and a bunch of dead rats. That was a bit more interesting than the dusty warehouses in East Island, but I'm sure the accounting department liked the expenditure of resources for that operation even less than I did. Agent Garrett is spent, and so are my happy thoughts about him. That's a bit harsh for the man who used to be our best friend. 
I know you don't let things go easy, but damn. What did he do to take you off? First, he broke the guy code by dating my sister. Then, to make a long story short, he broke the Braddock code by being himself. 10-11, this is Braddock. I'm heading for Harvey. Be ready to glide. Love the weather. Hope the weather's better in West Island. The Nagronas Highway 1. Southbound. Sunset Bay. West Island. Sunday, January 4th, 2415. Time, 10.53 a.m. I expected to encounter the same situation for Isaac Allister as I did for Sigmund Bryce. This time, there is nothing. The CID number included in the data on the flash drive belongs to a Timothy Orpa. And who is that? A two-year-old boy in Welford, East Island. This number does not fall in the range designated for his year of birth. It's much lower. This suggests to me that this is a reassigned CID number, but... Uh, it has no entries in its history. It doesn't prove anything one way or the other, but it fits in its own way. If Isaac Allister did exist and he became a black ops agent for the Department of Intelligence, we wouldn't find anything on him in the system. Those guys are ghosts. I did not know that the East Trident has their own intelligence service. At least not the extensive one that this data suggests. And they could have obtained the information from somewhere else, but yeah, they have their eyes out everywhere. My experience with them was not investigative. Right. Tactical Unit 7. The Crystal Drive offered plenty of other data which would offer leads. Some looks to be the information we would have found if we searched for Isaac Allister in 2404. Refresh my memory. It says that he was an intelligence analyst in special ops for FIS Counterterrorism, who called up promotion to Edict 2, right? There are notes which speculate he moved up. No copies of any official documents. Of course not. But what office was he from as an FIS agent? Seneca City, East Island. Small COD office, but big organized crime department. Probably the most aggressive in Northern East Island. I'm sure the Big V keeps a file on every agent from that office to assess their level of threat or corruptibility. Seneca City was in my area of operations, but 2404 was before my time there. That year, if I'm not mistaken, I was a rookie investigative specialist in New Rome. Slept in a van a lot. Ate tons of takeout. Horrible pay grade, but good experience. What office is Agent Zern from? Trinity, North Island. Not the same. But not too far either. The Eastern North rather than the Northern East. Why haven't we told the rest of the unit about this development? I intend to now. Before, I hesitated. I hesitated to throw in another variable that Agent Garrett might give undue attention. I didn't want to risk fraying our focus at a crucial time like this with something I can't substantiate. And from such a questionable source. Well, I know it's definitely to the East Tridon's benefit to draw the heat away from them. I'm sure they're desperate to. Even if we are well beyond believing that they are involved in this, the main task force is still dealing them a world of hurt. Wakeman won't stop until ordered to, in no uncertain terms. And even then, I don't know. His drive to take down the Big V goes beyond dedication. Even if this data is suspect, we need to disclose it to the others. We will. But first, I want to hear what Agent Zern has to say. I think it warrants more than a raised eyebrow that we should be given information that Mr. Cook might be a defected counterterrorism agent, originally with FIS, but promoted to the DOI. And then, enter Agent Zern, a counterterrorism agent with FIS who's just come out of a joint deep cover operation with who? The DOI. This almost gives the information more credence. Well, there's got to be something to it. What are the odds? The odds just improved. According to this, Agent Alistair worked cases related to gun rights activists, anti-prostitution, a little bit of everything. But he had a specialty. Let me guess. Conspiracy extremists. Maybe Agent Zern has it wrong. Sigmund Bryce was someone that Agent Alistair chased. It 
seems more likely to me that Sigmund Bryce is someone that Agent Alistair became. You believe that Sigmund Bryce may be legend? It would make sense. Let's see what Agent Zern says. Command post. Sunset Bay Police Station. West Island. Time, 11.17 a.m. From 2396 to 2403, our suspect, Sigmund Bryce, was a member of the conspiracy cult NEO. That's uh, New Earth Order, not to be confused with the Neo Earth Society from the Grady Belt of Conspiracy Camps in the South of the South. This cult, or tribe as they call themselves, operated along the northernmost shores of East Island and also in North Island villages along the Overt Channel, always near the water. Farther south than that, actually. They also move along the shores of the Burren Sound. I have a residence where they used to leave flyers. I remember them. They were one of those doomsday cults who believed that the world would end when 2400 arrived. Mankind has stirred up prophecies of doom for the end of each century since the beginning of recorded history. Funny how we get worked up about the arbitrary numbers we assign to things. We could characterize them as a doomsday cult, although they didn't believe in a total apocalypse like the Century 25ers or the Event Horizon Group. They did believe the world as we know it would end. They referred to it as the coming of new times. If I remember correctly, they believed that a breakdown of reality would take place following some major disaster, and three-quarters of people would cease to exist, including all of Edict One. You're familiar with Neo? I remember their flyers. I use the backs of them as scrap paper, mostly to doodle on. Doodle? I like to doodle. No comment. They believed in a world-changing event which would eliminate two-thirds of the population, and then they would become inheritors of New Earth. Why? What do you mean, why? These groups always hold themselves and their beliefs higher than... No, I mean, why two-thirds of the population? What would be the victimology? What two-thirds of the population? What do they share in common which dooms them? I presume there's something specific. Unbelievers in their ideologies would be my guess. They don't believe that they're real. They believe these people are illusions to our senses. Things which are not alive, but imitate life. Disturbing. Interesting. Philosophically, I I think that's kind of tired and bankrupt. No, I mean, it's interesting because it agrees with Mr. Cook's psychological profile, somewhat. Only his belief seems to have evolved to a position where no one is real. That's what enables him to kill without conscience. What did the New Earth Order do after 2400 came and went? Probably what all doomsayers do. They rescheduled their apocalypse. Neo didn't have to adjust their prophecies. Unlike most groups... They hadn't designated the turn of the century as their event. Instead, it was the start of a timetable of events, which would culminate in 2416. Out with the old times, in with the new. Next year. I notice that you keep referring to them in past tense. Is the new Earth Order no longer active? In 2403, there was a disagreement among its members about the role they should take in ushering in the new times. They splintered into two camps. No bad blood, just differences of opinion and practice. One of them was the Centurions, or as they would later call themselves collectively, the Chariot, who advocated a more active approach. The Chariot. Meaning that they would self-fulfill their own prophecy. Right. But this was construed as a lack of faith in their convictions by the larger camp of the passive philosophy. I have heard of the Chariot. They have a reputation for being violent extremists. This is only reputation. They have been interwoven in urban myth. There's no records, only spook stories people tell each other. It may be a bit more than stories now. The Chariot is familiar. I seem to remember... Odd. That's ringing a bell. I have to take this. Excuse me. Agent Resnick. Yes. Yes, I submitted a request for... What's that about? Urgent geek business. The chariot is setting off an alarm in my mind, too. Wasn't this the same conspiracist cult that was rumored to kidnap children? There was an investigation. Oh, which turned up no evidence, I do remember. These rumors reached the point of public hysteria in South Island for two months in 2408. 
All of it was based on nothing more than the ravelings of an eccentric attention-seeking old lady and a few pamphlets left in the neighborhood where a young boy went missing. That's correct. The case of the missing boy turned out to be a parental abduction. And now it's the perfect textbook example of the spiral from deviance amplification. Except I would swear that there was something else about this. Something else from a case The I... Melissa Parker case, right here in my notes that I digitized. What? It was one of those long shots we considered when we had hit the wall with the case and were desperate for leads. We looked at every possible anomaly in the house and divided them between us. So I looked into this long shot or you did? I did. One of the out of place things I found in the Parker house had been a tarot card, the chariot. There was nothing in their history or in the residence which would suggest they had any interest in mysticism. That was the only card. The deck it came from wasn't in the house, but I did trace that to a bundle sold to train station gift shops. I also knew that the chariot was the name of a conspiracy group said to be in the same region of South Island, thanks to the media coverage just months before. Where did you find the card? In a junk drawer. Not very compelling. Which is why I crossed it off the list, but now it strikes me as a little more than a coincidence. Especially if Mr. Cook was a member of the chariot. Briggs, were there any flyers that you found in the house with that card? Any conspiracist literature which could have been left in their mailbox or at the door? No, just the card. Sigmund Bryce did become a member of the Chariot, and it did move its base to South Island. But you all seem to be suggesting that he may have had something to do with the girl's abduction in 09. We know that he was in Holland Hill from 06 to 14, five months ago when he escaped. He may have the girl now, but during the time of her disappearance... He was looking for her in 06. It was from her neighborhood in Hennersville that he was picked up and hauled to Harlan Hill. We've asked ourselves many times while he was looking for her, as if this were a personal goal of his. But what if it was a goal of the chariot? What if his interest in her stemmed from their interest in her? An interest which continued without him and one day acted on three years later. What about the McCrins? We know that Melissa ended up with them. The murder of her parents and her abduction were pulled off with virtually no trail. The level of capability and resources required for that could be met by the McCrins, but it's doubtful that the Chariot or any other conspiracist group could come anywhere close. Otherwise, events like this wouldn't be so isolated. You're stepping into my territory there. Am I wrong? These groups can be much more disciplined than you suggested, and some even have financial backers. It's easy to underestimate because of their outlandish ideas, but then the Center City bombing should illustrate how big of a mistake that can be. If we assume that event was part of a conspiracist agenda, which I'm not going to, we have our own scenarios which would hold up better. Could the McCrins be financial backers for the Chariot, hypothetically? That's unlikely. And now you're treading on my territory, Zern. We've never established any strong connections between the conspiracist movement and organized crime, although maybe we should, considering organized crime gets all the funding. Now there's a classic. I wondered how long it would take for you to work in a jab about that. The lopsided allocation of resources to the divisions is a reality. Connections to conspiracy causes aren't that unusual for these crime bosses. I've seen the financial closets of a few. Men with power and money indulge in all kinds of irrational pursuits, especially when no one would dare question them. Look no further than Jacob Tunnell Sr. for an example. He was trying to locate paradox artifacts. Chief Yuma McCrin is openly superstitious. It said that people with deviant beliefs at the surface must have an equal or greater amount hidden below the surface, like the roots of a tree. Said by whom? By your own counterterrorism manuals on conspiracy psychology, of course. But most recently, by the therapist who did my latest psych eval. Assistant Director Brinley was concerned about me. Isn't that sweet? I sent him roses. I don't think roses give him the right message. Oh, I do. He's allergic. Violently. I hope we can agree on something and get our shit together before we call the briefing and give a profile to the locals. We need to do that soon. We have a bomb out there. Hmm. I understand that when FIS Counterterrorism runs joint operations with the Department of Intelligence, that it often doubles as an audition. I beg your pardon? Well, it's from FIS Counterterrorism that the Department of Intelligence tends to recruit, but only after a series of field tests to assess competence and suitability for an Edict II security clearance. 
Is there a question in there somewhere? No, just an observation. You must have failed the tests. I presume that your deep cover operation wasn't a success. Bummer. Blunt assumption, Ancient Garrett. And elementary deduction. Elementary, but worth it. I thrive on conflict. Lay off the blue fire tea, Garrett. Shit. I never bought any tea bags. Agent Zern, did your last operation have to do with the chariot? How did Sigmund Bryce become your case? Remember when I said that the New Earth Order splintered into two factions in 2403? One of them became the Centurions, or the Chariot. The other became the Order of the Watchtower, at least for a time. Over the next five years, their membership eroded. I was with them from 09 up until four months ago. They did still call themselves the Order of the Watchtower, but they're better known now as the Stimmertown Group. No wonder your operation ended. Hmm. Correct me if I have this wrong, but isn't this the same group that was in the news this past September? All 100 members of the cult died when the crowded ship that they meant to take to sea exploded in Troy Harbor? You're serious? You were in deep with them? There were 88 members. That's not including the deep cover agents. Well, I thought there were no survivors. There was one. I'm... Here because of dumb luck. It was an accident, was it? That's why the details are classified, aside from the DOI involvement? I've not been cleared to discuss the incident. Incident, yes. Accident, probably not. We understand, though, how the DOS destroying a ship loaded with innocent men, women, children should probably be classified. Our lips are sealed. Shh. Speak for yourself. Uh-oh, Agent Zern. You'd better watch out for Agent Kircher. She may spill the beans. That's not what I meant. I meant that I don't have any notions that the DOS is... Oh, never mind. I have not been cleared to discuss the incident. And there is no relevance to this case. If the Order of the Watchtower was a group with passive philosophies, why did you infiltrate them? And if your operation wasn't about the Chariot, then why is Sigmund Bryce a loose end that you were assigned to? One of our objectives was maintaining an up-to-date threat assessment of the Stimmertown group, but also exploiting their position as a major source of contact between other groups. A component of our operation was about the Chariot, who still communicated with the Watchtower. These were one-way communications and cryptic, but contained clues to their activities and plans. It was the only rich source of chatter from the Chariot that we had access to for analysis. And this chatter mentioned Sigmund Bryce? It did, and it also pointed to a major event on New Year's Day. I'd only gotten as far as tracing Bryce to South Island in 2406. I was looking into the chance that he may have been a John Doe who was apprehended and institutionalized. That's where my case collided with yours. Agents? Everything all right? Our FRS request has been authorized by A.D. Dockstader. Recognition algorithms for Melissa Parker's face have been bumped to the highest priority tier of the automatic alerting system, which looks for matches. Active now? Yes, for all West Island cameras. We will have the quickest response in those areas which I have designated as hotspots. In the oldest West Island settlements? Based on a West Island map from 2146, that is correct. In those areas, we should know within a few minutes whether an algorithmic match has been detected. In other areas, no later than 20 minutes after. The processing time varies for each camera network. Now that we have a perfect scan of her face, what about the digital archives? I have tasks mining the archives for the mainland, North Island, and West Island for the past seven days. This could expose her past whereabouts, which could be helpful, yes? Yes, great work, Agent Resnick. Did I miss anything crucial while I stepped out? That Mr. Cook as a possible member of a conspiracist extremist group, may have more on his side than cool hiding places that we can't detect. He may have help. Conspiracist hideout. Condemned building. Rusty Road. San Julian, West Island. There was a time not so long ago when there were many more of us. The zeal or impatience of some caused them to stray, as those who braved the ocean from the San Julian docks last year 
off to find the fables in the abyss of Edict Zero's ocean. I suspect they found death or prison cells on the sixth island. What they found was their destiny. What we will find is everyone's today. Yes, we are ready. And the vices we have planted at the site are operational and have been undisturbed. The personal teleporter. May I hold it? May I? That would not be best. Can't you use it to teleport into Nemtex, removing the need to infiltrate it the hard way? It can only take me to places where I have been, and where I have left a marker. Can I ask you, what happened to your skin? It doesn't look well. Nice way to make the bringer feel welcome, Delta. And that is why it would not be best if you handle the device. This is not a burden meant for you. It's dangerous to use. What is your name? This here is Delta. She is our technical wizard. She once worked in the belly of the monster that is Xena's corporation. She has an intimate knowledge of their systems and how they are designed. It's handy knowledge to have, considering Xena's has a monopoly over everything. Security systems, manager systems, building network interfaces, and of course, Z-Link. I just ripped a unit out of the van we'll be using today. She is a highly efficient. Why, thank you, boss. And that's why I need to get back to it. I've got some more phases to tinker with. The other woman is my spirited lieutenant, Gretchen. Former military ground force. Dishonorable discharge and a branding from the DOS for having conspiracist leadings. Well, that and the whole sabotage thing. That Zenith security gets up suits you, Gretch. You rock it. I rock all kinds of things. Finally, we have Framer. Sometimes he is a muscle. Sometimes the mayhem. Today, he will be some of both. But first, he drive. Vroom, vroom. <laughs> What about me, guys? What about me? And this, this is Adam, Delta's brother, who has only just joined us. And who will be staying here? And of course, as you know, I am Dimitri Zonchan. We have past places in common, I understand. Such as the hill. Harden Hill Sanitarium is a place where they hide their mistakes. Yes, I was there. Even the most ludicrous lies and the strangest of unlikely worlds are embraced by those who cannot conceive of anything else but the lie exposed to them, reinforced to them, to those who run their lies. The truth is a demon to be cast out by these simple social rituals. Those inherent creatures who yearn for status and acceptance by their own. How accursed it is. How easier for them to accept the institution presented than to question it and be branded the villain, the fool, the pariah, the insane. This we must not be concerned with before the higher priority of truth. Regardless, for in the end, we shall be vindicated by exposing truths which cannot be cast out, cannot be cracked, and buried anew. What you have for us today brings us closer to this day. It does. The briefcase. That is the artifact briefcase. It will deter. It will, while we obtain something much more precious. Evidence and gateways to new resources. Which you say the girl can control. She resonates with the artifacts at the same level. Resonates with Edict Zero. 
Is it true what they say about your eyes? Would you like me to remove my sunglasses? You have nothing to prove to us. How could you see? How can I not? You have brought with you much evidence already. I have so much more to show you. But we must leave now. Forces align against us. It is time. It is time. Command post. Sunset Bay Police Station. West Island. Tide, 11.53 a.m. After Mr. Cook fired, there's a period of about seven seconds where nothing is happening. I can see by Mr. Cook's shadow that he crouched down next to Mr. Leary. Melissa is watching them. What's going on there? What is he doing? It's impossible to tell. I think he may be... whispering. Agent Resnick, could you amplify the audio during this period here? Between the gunshots and when Mr. Cook and Melissa exit. I could if you ask nicely. I didn't ask nicely. We are to go for your briefing to police at the noon 15 in about 20 minutes. We should be ready by then. Where did Agent Parrish go? She's out in the field coordinating other agents and chasing down a few leads. Uh, listen, the media's all over the place. We also have uh, many inquiries about when we may hold a press conference. R right now, uh, we... We have no statement to give the public at this time. Uh, what, what she said. Agent Kircher, consider yourself appointed our media liaison. I don't remember drawing a short straw. They are insistent. And the public could be of help, no? There are political considerations this time with the FIS. Oh, what the hell with the political? This is a man with a bomb in the population. In situations like this, where the public is already traumatized, it may just cause panic and complications. What are they saying? We need to keep an eye on that. Doc Stater said to minimize communication with the media until he arrives. He's coming to West Island? He should be here this evening. A big shot, huh? A big shot. Just what we need. I'll go prepare for the brief. Have we decided how to characterize Melissa Parker for our profile? Is there another way to characterize her other than a hostage? Yes, as a brainwashed accomplice whose judgment has been compromised. It bothers me that she didn't speak at least nothing comprehensible. Why didn't she speak to Bernard Leary, security guard? That bothered me too. It looks to me that she may have been trying to buy time and distract the guard until Sigmund Bryce returned. I resent that you would want to portray her that way. Cook, or Bryce, whatever we want to call him, probably told her not to talk and she was afraid to. Afraid that he might overhear and there would be consequences. She looks afraid, yes, but not afraid enough to run when given the chance. Look at the video of the shooting again. She had ample opportunity to escape from Bryce while he was downstairs in the basement. This girl has been in captivity for six years, and what began as compliance for the sake of survival has most likely developed into a psychological dependence. One which is just strong enough to keep her from running. But that's not the same as what you're suggesting. Being owned or ruled by someone may be all she knows now. Where's she gonna go? Brainwashed accomplished, I don't buy. But I definitely detect a Stockholm Syndrome dynamic here. Maybe one which Mr. Cook inherited from the McCrins. Think about it. He could be perceived as a savior on some level, and that he freed her from the captivity of the McCrins. She's clearly horrified in the video when he murders the security guard. His violence and cruelty toward others creates a reference to his capability, and his lack of violence against her could then be perceived as an act of kindness. For which she's grateful, sympathetic, and therefore... I would drop that line of thought if I were you. This is my area. It appears everyone is drawing their lines in the sand today. That won't make much of a difference if the tide rolls in with the Department of Intelligence pulling jurisdiction, eh, Zern? Excuse me? What did you mean by that? I'm just wondering how much Agent Zern hasn't told us, and what surprises may be coming our way. You don't trust me? Could I trust you to tell us if Sigmund Bryce was actually a cover identity for a counter-terrorism agent who fell a little too hard into his work? What? 
Marcus, do you know something we ought to know about? I think he's suggesting that Mr. Cook was a mentally compromised agent that the COD wants to disavow. Agent Resnick, you don't look surprised. What is going on? Agent Briggs asked me to decrypt the information which was given to him. I will upload snapshots of the pages from these files for you all. Zern? Well, Agent Briggs, I would say the idea is outrageous, and if this was a belief of yours, I would ask what corroborating evidence you have for basis. The East Tridon keeps dossiers on agents in their territory so they know who might be a problem, who to look out for. What I have is uncorroborated and comes from them, but you all need to look at it now before we go any further. And you're going to give this source credence? The information was collected in 2404, around the time that Agent Zern said the New Earth Order divided into two branches. It concerns an FIS counterterrorism agent from the Seneca City Field Office by the name of Isaac Allister. The informant claimed that he and Mr. Cook are one and the same. Under what circumstances were you approached by this informant? At gunpoint at 4.30 in the morning, he broke into my motel room in Promontory. You must know that these mobsters have much to gain by feeding us misinformation. They look out for themselves. I am aware of the environment, thanks. I don't think that this should factor into the profile until we give it a closer eye. I would have expected you to be the one to want to run with this. Scream it from the rooftops. Oh, I'd never do that. It's cold and drafty up there. You have doubts about this? Doesn't this fall rather neatly into your suspicions about government involvement in Hmm. all this? Briggs, the informant identified himself as a messenger of the East Tridon? Isn't that atypical? It was unusual, yes, and so was he. But these are unusual times, and he wouldn't be any more specific. How much more specific could he be? He wouldn't say which family he served. But why would he tell you who sent him? Why would they want you to know that it came from them? I presume so I would take it more seriously. I got the feeling that they had done their homework on me and believed I would be the most receptive. Not that that's saying much. They couldn't exactly take it to Wakeman, now could they? When referring to the East Triton, did he use the first-person plural of we or third-person plural? What? They. I don't remember. But I sensed that he only worked for them. Grudgingly. I asked him if they had something over his head, and his response so much as confirmed it. From the position of the Tridon, I think Anonymous would have been the better choice. Anonymous would be a safer bet. Less risk. Would you take Anonymous less seriously? Perhaps. But you wouldn't approach it from the place of bias. Bias can be expected, practically guaranteed from an agent with a career in the organized crime division. Why would they knowingly reduce the credibility of the source of the information that they want you to embrace? I... Information, I might add, that they don't just want you to embrace, but are desperate for you to embrace. Okay. I don't know. I didn't think of that. What are you saying? Are you suggesting that this is a sign that I'm corrupt? Or they think I'm corrupt or wouldn't have bias? No. Though that would be interesting. I think he's saying that there are no spheres. I'm saying that the info might not have come from them. Titanic Coast Highway. Northbound. Ventura. West Island. They'll scan for a Z-Link registered to Zenus, and they'll pick up one or they'll think they did anyway. Same for the plates. I'm more worried about these Zenith technician badges. These are going to scan, right? No, they're not. Duh. I infiltrated the grounds to plant the charges, didn't I? We're fine. You verified that they weren't compromised since then? Are you really going to make me answer that? Now is not the time to lose faith, Framer. We have been so disciplined up to now. Just making sure that all the bases are covered. Once we're out of the bed, it's all rock and roll. If there are problems at the gate, we accelerate the plans by setting off the diversionary charges immediately. That will have security scrambling in every direction but in our way. But we'll need to move fast. It's going to be a bad day to be on security detail there. Remember, Gretchen, only what is necessary. We are champions of truth, not a death squad. Only what is necessary. We're almost there. 
Then takes us at the Holland Cove limits. Test team communications. Am I in your ears? Dead for. All ready to make some magic. Everyone, take these moments to breathe and collect yourselves in your mind. You are all going to die. That helped. So the little bitch speaks. Thanks for your vote of confidence. Well, fatalism is adorable. Girl, everything dies eventually. Melissa never gives pleasant forecasts. It's when she speaks of sunshine that you should expect the most rain. I think I'll bring an umbrella, just in case. Activate the divider. Enter quiet mode. Here we go. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hold up your Z-badges, please. Sure. Nice day, ain't it? Not so much for me, buddy. If I weren't pulling the devil today, I'd be heading out of here now. Eight more hours. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, taking my lunch right here, unfortunately. Speaking of that, I don't remember you guys leaving for lunch. I'm usually pretty good about remembering faces. Former bartender thing, I think. Oh, well, we... We can... are called in to perform special maintenance in the research wing. This is the first we have been here today. Yeah, well, that explains it. Well, your badge is checked. You're clear. Have a good day. Thanks. Not so fast yet. Why are you staring at the meter? You see something off? He walked on shore. I thought so, too. I expected for him to ask for CID. His eyes are on us. Uh... He's picking up the phone. Might be calling in. Let's give him something else to talk about. Delta! Set off charges! Fast track! I've just jammed all cell phone signals and all wireless networks on the site just went down. How much farther is the shipping bay? This building didn't seem this long on the schematic. Almost there. Almost there. The bay doors are closed. They should have been open. People are fleeing out the regular doors. We move now while they can access. Regroup inside the bay. Briefing. Sunset Bay Police Station. West Island. The scroll is being with the Centurions or the Chariot, an extremist offshoot of the New Earth Order. We believe that he's operating alone, but there is a possibility that he may have support from other people involved with charity in the region. Do not take for granted that he is alone. This man is six foot two with long tangled hair. He wears a trench coat over a business suit. They're both wrinkled and dirty. This man is not hard to spot, but has found a way to avoid detection. He is extremely dangerous and will kill without conscience. He will do it calmly, without hesitation. To him, other people are not real. He may not even believe himself to be real. This guy has a bomb? He is carrying a briefcase which we believe to be a bomb, yes. It is essential that he is separated from this briefcase as quickly as possible. We also know that he's carrying an anachronistic handgun, a 357 caliber, which he used to murder a security guard last night at the theater. This man will not be taken alive if he can help it. If he seems to be trying to reason with you, it is most likely a tactic. Be vigilant of every beat in dealings with Mr. Bryce. He may not recognize the name Sigmund Bryce, by the way, if you use it to address him. Mr. Cook is the alias which the suspect will most readily identify with and answer to. Also note that he wears sunglasses at all times, day or night, rain or shine. They conceal one of his distinguishing features. He has no eyes. But make no mistake, he's not blind. He utilizes some kind of technology that enables him to see. What technology is this? Yes, Agent Zern, what technology is this? We do not know, but we do know that he can see. The point is, do not factor in visual impairment when considering how to approach or subdue him. The girl that he is with will answer to the name Melissa. We have reason to believe that she has been in a captive role for the past six years and may have developed a dependency on that role and to him. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
The security video from the crime scene at the theater captured Melissa's this face. This is an automated and notification that you have to need high priority alerts in your inbox, which... Agent Garrett, why aren't you at the briefing with the others? I'm more of a boxer's kind of guy. Stop being a child, Agent Garrett. Deep down inside, aren't we all? You are not amusing. It's genetic. I come from a long line of bad punchlines. Isn't that a gabble vest? Not in that context, and I saw no reason to be at the briefing. I already know the material being covered, and the other agents seem to be handling the dispensing of it just fine. My time is better spent looking into new leads. We have a hit. The FRS caught a match in a data stream from a camera in Central West Island. It's from... Wait... Wait... Where? In Holland Cove, that's up the coast right across the bay. Melissa Parker? Yes, she is with Mr. Cook in Holland Cove. They were captured by a camera only five minutes ago. My God, just five minutes! Holland Cove is one of the old settlements. Here, see! That's her. Get the others. This is Special Agent Cora Resnick from Federal Investigative That's Services. That's Melissa. I need to talk That's to Mr. Cook's agent. shadow without a body to go with it. And that's three other shadows of people with guns. Mr. Cook does have help. Agent Garrett. I know. We need to go now. Right now. Nantax Technologies. Xenos Corporation subsidiary. Site WC-15. Holland Cove, West Island. This is at bad one over. We have no visuals, not security monitors, or information on the status of the incident. Over. This is South Bay one. Please instruct over. What the hell is going on? Even the damn phones are down. Please just sit tight. That's right, everyone in. Sit tight. Be ready to move at a moment's notice. We have no communications on break a post to see what the hell's going on out there. That's against procedure. We need to... Ah, bunk procedure. Oh, thank the high edicts. Do you Zenith guys know what's going on? We have multiple explosions and a fire. We need everyone out of this building, out of this wing, now! Evacuate now, please! I need to receive that from my supervisor. We have very strict procedures I on how to- I don't have time for this. We need to evacuate this area now! All right, all right. Let me at least just scan your z badge so I can- Scan that! Why did you- Why? Why did you- Oh. Apparently, not stunned enough. You're gonna be one of those, huh? Don't make me use the other one. It'll leave a big hole in you. Who... who are you people? We are the people who have come to answer much bigger questions. What is the code for the door across the room which accesses the basement? Oh, no, I... Hmm? I don't know. Where do they all go? They didn't listen. They're heading up the other way. God bless people's inability to follow directions. Framer, make sure they don't come back this way. Do move! Wow, what the hell right there? This is out there, one. We have a breach! A breach! Help! Emergency! Emergency! That was a gift. Thank you for listening to this episode of Edict Zero FIS. Music and ambience heard on the show come from Nine Inch Nails, Kevin McLeod, Salatus, ERH, How to Destroy Angels, and Rebel Nine. Other music and sound effects come from Public Domain Show Producer and Slipgate Nine Studio Resources, as well as material released freely on the internet through such venues as the Internet Archive. Look to the show credits on the website for more information. 
This episode is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivative Works 3.0 United States License. For more information on Edict Zero FIS, visit its home at edictzero.wordpress.com. Thank you for listening. adjust your sets you're tuned to wednesday wonders on the mutual audio network tomorrow on mutual is thursday thrillers our roundup of action adventure mystery crime drama and thrillers of course subscribe to the full mutual audio network feed for every day of diverse audio tales or find the thursday thrillers feed in your favorite podcast players the mutual audio network Listening and imagining together.